How we do? Time to attach some strings, I think. Hi, I'm Chris. Welcome to Kink with Sport Creations. Yes, it's string attaching day. So headless guitars, what's the problem with them? How are we going to attach the strings? It's obviously going to be different from normal. This is a five string multi-scale job as well. So that just throws extra complications in for bridge areas for sure. So let's do the simple thing first, or what I think is the simple bit, and sort out attaching to the headless headstock. And let's see how we're gonna do that. Are we on? Are we on? So I guess the first question is, how do you attach strings without the normal tune-in pegs at the top? Well, you've got a myriad of options. The normal answer is to put the strings the wrong way around. So you get your little circular nut thing on the end of the string, which usually attaches to the bridge. Well, this time round, we're gonna flip it, so that's gonna be at the head end. Now, there's a whole load of ways that you could do that. I'm gonna use string ferrules. So I've got these Goto string ferrules. Um, obviously, they come in a pack of four when they're base related, so I've had to buy two packs. The reason I've gone for these ones is they're quite shallow. So a lot of the string ferrules that I was looking through that are base specific, they're actually wide enough to get a massive B string through because <laughs> it is massive. Anything that's actually base specific and wide enough, they're usually quite deep because they're designed to go through the body. Well, we've only got a limited amount of space over at the head. Um, so I managed to find these Goto ones. They're relatively shallow. So I've got plenty of meat to put those in the back and make sure they're not gonna literally pull out through the front as well. So the first thing is just to lay these out, mark off exactly where they're going to go, and then we can move on from there. Okay, so firstly, I'm gonna mark off um, where the nut's going to go, and yes, we've got a zero fret, but I'm gonna put this nut in there to make sure that the strings cannot possibly move sideways because that'll screw everything else up. So that's the mark off where the nut's gonna go. So we've then got that kind of space to fit them in. Now, these are fairly wide, and obviously these are gonna be attached to the back, but they're too wide to just put five in a row. Because if you do that, the outside strings are gonna be splaying outwards, and who wants that? So what I think I'm gonna do is have a three and a two. And yes, I'm attaching them on that angled plane to match everything else off as well. To, to cut them off straight would look really strange. Um, so we're gonna do something like that. So it's gonna look like that. You're gonna get the strings coming out the top. These are gonna be on the back side. So all I'm gonna do is measure off where the outside strings go, where the center string is, and then I can just split the difference to make there. So five strings, actually really easy to get that spacing done. So putting those on like that, looking at it, I think I want a little bit more space here at the top. definitely work into that and that right okay so drilling these pilot holes they obviously want to be uh, nice and square 90 degrees there is no way I'm gonna hold this base up to my <laughs> pillar drill and try and hold it at a perfect 90 degrees while pulling a lever down no so what do we do we get a little block of wood and cut a notch out at 90 degrees Simple. So all I need to do is put the drill into that little nick that we made with the brad all. And then using this little cutout, you can see we've just cut that out 90 degrees just using the bandsaw. Um, as long as that then fits in, I can see that I am 90 degrees. I'm not coming in at an angle like that. Um, if I try and angle it that way, it pushes the block back so I can see that's not straight. So all I need to do is make sure that that's tucked in the corner and then that is going to be a nice 90 degree drill through. Mm -hmm. 
Now when you get to there and you're down as far as you can go, you can then just remove that because this is already now in its straight. It's just the matter of then continuing the hole and it's going to run in straight. So now when we turn that over, we've got our pilot holes that might be a bit scruffy and it might be a bit of an ugly duckling at the minute, but it's going to be gorgeous. Can we just show the back of this base a little bit of love? If you like the look of that, give me a like, give me a comment. It's pretty, isn't it? Yum e. So now I'm just going to flatten off this back edge. Um, the clamping may seem a little Heath Robinson, but it is actually all safe, it's secure, it's protected, it's not going to slip. Uh, so we can just go into there and I'm going to use chisels and planes as much as possible uh, to try and make sure that we get that nice and flat. So these string ferrules, I've not used them before, so always do a test hole first. Um, it turns out that the outside ring is 13 mil. I don't have a 13 mil bit. But what I do have is a great rack of these, and it turns out a number eight, one of these, is the same thing. So a number eight has done the outside ring, and then a nine mil bit uh, has done the rest of it so the string ferrule fits in there quite nicely. Use a small chunk of wood, it's really easy to get that string ferrule back out. All you're going to do is split down there with a chisel, crack the wood open, you've got your ferrule back. Okay, so what I feared might happen has happened. Um, as we've come through, because these are quite close together, it's just chipped a little bit out in between. It's managed to keep it on this one, so I've put some super thin super glue uh, just into here so it soaks in and strengthens that up, so hopefully that will never move ever again. This one, however, needs a little bit of fixing, so I'm going to cut a clean edge on both sides of this, put a tiny little piece of maple in, and then we'll trim it round um, to try and get it to fit. There we go, one quick repair. Realistically, when that's got all the finish on, you'll never ever see that. Quite often these bits um, are almost too sharp, so if you're just going forwards, it can just pull and rip straight the way through. So I like to go in reverse to start off with. That establishes an edge. And we should better get something from that. Uh, 
and then with these little furry bits that pork out just trim them off with a knife well with a bit of faffing we've got there so we now have the holes in the back ready for the ferrules. I'm not going to put those in until all the rest of the carving and features have all been sorted. Um, all I'm going to do now is drill a 4mm hole through from this side because that's fat enough to get even that B string through. Um, and then we can just shape that a little bit. So I'll use some needle files so that the hole just curves towards the nut a little bit so that string isn't trying to cut its own groove because that's later when you're playing in it. <laughs> mm. Right, ah, uh, coffee on the go, trying to figure out, just making the, the design here. I want to incorporate my three pointed crown but because it's all wonky, I don't just want to do the crown straight. Uh, again, that would just look a bit silly, I think. Um, and I'm not precious about it. So if we can make it match the, the brief, then we should. Uh, so I think definitely it needs to be thinner there. Just trying to get the balance between having it right. Um, measurements don't necessarily mean a great deal compared to what it's going to look like. Yeah, I think definitely heading all the way down there. There we go, that's the back sorted out. Now, if you've watched any of my channels before, you know I'm a hand tool woodworking kind of guy. But I tell you what, this thing, just unbelievable. I actually class this more like a hand tool than a power tool. Yes, it makes a big noise, but it doesn't fill the workshop with dust and you can get such accurate work with it. It's the same as just working with uh, tiny chisels and files and things like that. It's so delicate. Um, but quick and efficient. If you haven't got a finger sander, click the link in the description and get yourself one. You will not regret it. Okay, so before I take this uh, face down a little bit to make this just a little bit thinner, I'm gonna make the nut first so that then I can have that nice curve coming off the nut down into, I'm only gonna take probably about that much off, but it'll just add an extra little detail along that ridge that hopefully will come out quite nicely. So just making the nut exactly the same as you would normally make a nut, but fractionally lower than that zero fret, so it doesn't get in the way at all. It's literally to hold the strings in place sideways. Um, and with big fat bass strings, well, the normal files I use are gonna do some of these narrower ones. The rest of it, it's gonna be using things like these needle files, um, that's, that's not even fat enough for the B string. So we'll work with that and make sure it's, uh, it's fit and accurate.
never ever breathe in bone dust folks. So all there is left to do now is to put these ferrules in, uh, which is really scary by the way, always. Now that was poo your pants scary. Uh, half expecting the headstock to just split apart, but it didn't. <sighs> nice. Well, there's no way in hell I'm gonna get all the bridge pieces sorted out in time for this video, unfortunately. So you'll have to come back next week to see all of those go in. <laughs> Click, like, subscribe, do all that stuff, uh, and have a go. Grab some tools, see what you can make. Till next week, God bless.